how does the use of oral contraceptives affect muscle growth in women? Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm diving into a brand new study that tackles a surprisingly unexplored question in exercise science. And that is how does oral contraceptive use affect muscle growth in women? While birth control is one of the most commonly used prescription medications amongst women, especially in athletes, its impact on training adaptations hasn't clearly been established. Some studies suggest that hormonal contraceptives might blunt our ability to make gains. Others show no difference and a few even hint at a possible benefit. And now this 2025 study from a group of researchers in Norway adds some interesting data to the conversation, comparing muscle hypertrophy and strength gains between women using oral contraceptives and those with natural menstrual cycles after 12 weeks of heavy strength training. So let's start with some background. Strength training is well known to promote hypertrophy and strength, but how much a person responds can depend on several variables, including their training design, their nutrition, sleep, and hormones. Oral contraceptives typically work by delivering synthetic forms of estrogen and progesterone which prevent ovulation and create the physiological conditions that reduce the likelihood of contraception. In doing so, they suppress natural hormone fluctuations and may influence key regulators of muscle adaptation. On one hand, it's been alleged that oral contraceptives may enhance muscle growth by promoting satellite cell activity and increasing levels of myogenic factors. On the other hand, they can also elevate levels of sex hormone binding globulin, which may reduce the availability of other anabolic hormones like testosterone and potentially limit muscle development. Past research has shown mixed outcomes, with some studies reporting impaired growth, some showing no difference, and others showing enhanced hypertrophy with oral contraceptives. Unfortunately, there are a number of methodological differences across these studies, making it difficult to draw strong conclusions. Given the conflicting evidence, the purpose of this study was to directly compare muscle hypertrophy in women using combined oral contraceptives versus those with a natural menstrual cycle. By controlling the training variables, the hormone phase, and nutritional intake, the researchers aim to determine whether oral contraceptive use impairs or alters the body's ability to build muscle during resistance training. This study recruited 32 healthy, untrained women aged 18 to 40 and were split into two groups. 15 women were habitual users of a second or third generation menophasic oral contraceptives, and this is basically just a type of birth control pill that delivers a consistent hormone level throughout the cycle, and 17 naturally menstruating women with regular cycles. The training intervention lasted about 12 weeks, corresponding to three menstrual or pill cycles, with both groups completing the same training program. Participants trained twice per week using a progressively heavier training protocol. In the first phase, they performed two to three sets of eight to 12 reps per exercise. And in the second phase, this progressed to three to four sets of six to 10 repetitions. And then by the final phase, they were performing three to four sets of four to eight repetitions. The exercises in included movements like the machine leg and chest press, the eccentric leg and hip extension, the Nordic hamstring curls, and a neutral grip cable pull down. Effort was auto-regulated using the reps in reserve approach, starting with moderate intensity and then progressing towards failure by the end of each four week cycle. Lastly, to ensure adherence and proper technique, at least one session per week was supervised by a trained research assistant. Now, body composition was assessed using DEXA scans for whole body and regional lean mass measurements, while muscle size was assessed using ultrasound, which is a more direct method used to measure cross-sectional area of the vastus lateralis at multiple sites across the thigh. Now, when it comes to strength, the isometric knee extension strength was measured with a dynamometer, and the researchers also monitored dietary intake, sleep, and subjective factors like vitality and recovery. And lastly, hormone levels were assessed throughout the study using blood draws to account for physiological differences between the groups. So let's take a look at the results. What did the authors find? Hormonal analysis confirmed that the oral contraceptive group had low and stable estradiol and progesterone levels, while the non-users displayed a normal hormonal fluctuation as of the menstrual cycle. Both groups were well matched in training effort, volume and nutrition, and thankfully no injuries or adverse events occurred during the study. After 12 weeks of progressive full body resistance training, both groups of women experienced significant improvements in muscular and body composition outcomes. 
but the highlighted finding of this study seemed to be the difference in muscle cross-sectional area of the quadricep and the subtle differences in lean arm mass. The researchers used ultrasound to assess the CSA of the quadricep femoris muscle at three specific points along the thigh, the proximal, mid and distal thigh. While both groups improved over time, the group using oral contraceptives showed significantly greater increases in muscle CSA at the 50% or that mid-thigh side compared to the non-oral contraceptive group. Interestingly, there were no significant differences observed at the other measurement sites of the quad. Although the absolute differences in CSA were relatively small in practical terms, they were statistically significant. So this suggests that oral contraceptive use may provide a small hypertrophic advantage at certain regions of the quadricep. Now, that said, I've created a table to show you the results of this study. You can see that the baseline values tended to be larger for whatever reason in the non-contraceptive group. It's also worth noting that the differences in the change in muscle CSA at that 50% site between both groups was 0.8 centimeters squared. And this is a difference that may not be too meaningful and might actually fail to exceed the author's measurement error. Now, when looking at the DEXA findings, the authors noted similar changes in most of the other measurements. However, they did note a larger increase in arm lean mass for the contraceptive group compared to the non-contraceptive group. The contraceptive group increased their estimated arm lean mass from 4.3 to 4.6 kilograms, whereas the non-contraceptive group increased from 4.5 to 4.6. And finally, there were no significant differences observed when it came to lower body isometric strength gains. Apart from a small difference in sleep duration, the groups were comparable in appetite, dietary intake, subjective assessments of vitality, their motivation to exercise, and perceived recovery status throughout the training intervention. Altogether, these results challenged the long-standing belief that oral contraceptives blunt muscle building potential. Now, in the context of a supervised, well-controlled training program in recreationally active young women, oral contraceptive use appears not only safe, but potentially advantageous advantageous for certain site-specific hypertrophy adaptations. But before we take these results and run a mile with them, let's discuss a few things first. According to the authors, these findings suggest that oral contraceptives may actually enhance muscle growth in response to resistance training, or at least in untrained women over a 12-week period. While the underlying mechanisms aren't fully confirmed, the authors did point to several plausible explanations. They suggest that synthetic estrogens may amplify anabolic signaling via greater satellite cell activation and lead to increased expression of myogenic regulatory factors. They also suggest that some oral contraceptives may also raise circulating folostatin, which may influence muscle growth. And finally, they also speculate that the impact may differ based on the oral contraceptive use. For example, 13 out of 15 women in this study used an oral contraceptive containing levonorgestrel, which is a synthetic form of progestin, which has very mild androgenic activity, possibly contributing to the suspected superior growth. Now, all this to say, when looking closely at the muscle growth data, it's worth pointing out that the absolute hypertrophy differences between these two groups were very modest roughly three to five percentage points in total. Overall, the majority of body composition and muscle image sites of the thigh in this study appear to have changed very similarly between both the groups. And this is why we need to be careful not to jump to the conclusion that oral contraceptives enhance muscle growth. To me, this data is certainly very intriguing, but additional studies with non-exercise control groups are necessary before any strong conclusions can be drawn. So consider this for a moment. Perhaps the other three measurement sites which observe similar changes in muscle growth are more representative of the true effect, and the difference observed at that 50% site was simply spurious. For me personally, I will remain skeptical until we have more compelling data on this topic. And finally, last but not least, with regards to oral contraceptives and strength, the results of this study do not support the concerns that oral contraceptives suppress strength adaptations, as both groups gained similar amounts of knee extension strength. If anything, perhaps the findings of this study should encourage women that oral contraceptives do not appear to hinder muscle growth or the strength response to resistance training over the short term. Now, 
the researchers did acknowledge several limitations in this study, namely the lack of non-exercise control group and the fact that only the lower body strength was tested, despite larger gains being seen in the arms. So what does this all mean for you and I? Well, overall, this study provides evidence that second and third generation oral contraceptives may not negatively impact strength or muscle hypertrophy in response to strength training. Of course, you're going to hear some interpretations of this paper that suggest that muscle growth was enhanced. However, the difference between the groups was quite small. While the potential mechanisms are still being explored, these findings offer some reassurance and even some encouragement for women who train while using hormonal contraception. And again, please remember the effect size from this study was very moderate and that individual responses can vary. We still need more long-term studies to understand the physiological relevance of these findings, especially in trained populations or with different contraceptive formulations. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future videos where I break down the science behind training, nutrition, and female physiology. And if you're somebody who uses oral contraceptives and lifts, I'd love to hear your experience in the comments. Have you guys noticed any changes in your muscle gains or your recovery or just training in general? If you do, your insights might help others watching this video navigate this topic more confidently. And as always, thank you so much for supporting my evidence-based content and I will see you in the next video.